He told her he had $200,000 saved and was going to buy her a house. After she found out her boy toy was broke and lied to her about everything, she moved away from him and went from one relative to the next. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to True Story Nation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's True Story Nation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you've gone through a situation, you know, you were married for a number of years, you you were in a relationship for a number of years, and you got treated like crap, but you made it out successfully, or you just want others to learn from your mistakes. Send those stories in. But you you guys read the title? Let's just get into this one. So the subject, my first marriage. Hmm. Hello, True. I've listened to so many stories over the course of the past few weeks, and I don't think there is any that quite touch the same level of insanity than mine has uh oh many are very close but not close enough first this is several years in my past but the memories still live on like it happened last week we got married very young we were both 18 and she was pregnant with my first child we would go on to have three more i knew early on in this marriage that things were not shaping into what I expected out of a wife. Before anyone starts punching me with feminist boxing gloves, I do not mean she should be home waiting on me hand and foot. I'm not one to think that way and neither was she. From the time we were married and a few months before coming straight out of high school, I worked around 70 hours a week. Seven days one week and six days the next. This went on for years. She didn't work at all. I was happy that she didn't need to work, but at the same time, in my opinion, she didn't do enough at home. She didn't cook. She didn't really clean much. And she wasn't very interested in sex. Once every month or two was about the average for us. Keep in mind, I'm in my late teens, early 20s at this point. Not exactly the sex life I dreamed of. This went on into our early 30s. Nothing really improved throughout this time. If she got a job, she would complain every single day she had to go. Not only that, but she'd insist that I come meet her there to have lunch. At this time, I was working a different job than my original. It was on nights. Still working many hours, anywhere from 55 to 65 hours per week. It was a very strenuous and physical job, yet she expected me to sleep in shifts. I would get home at around 5 a.m. and wait to make sure all the kids got up, dressed, and gone to school. She refused to wake up and do it herself, even though she only worked part-time, maybe 20 hours per week. She complained so much that I just told her to quit, and I'd try to work more overtime to make it up. The constant whining and complaining just wasn't worth listening to every single day. After I saw the kids off to school, I'd sleep a few hours, get up, and then take the youngest to daycare. Go back home, sleep a couple of hours, then go pick him up. By the time I got home, it was time to get ready for work. Wow. We live in a decent neighborhood. It wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst. She wanted something better, but without her bringing in any kind of money, there was no hope for that. Honestly, needing better wasn't necessary. It was just something she wanted. I think it was more of a self-image than anything else. I made it clear that without her getting a full-time job, we were not going anywhere. It just wouldn't be affordable. Time went on and we started drifting further and further apart. I really wanted to have a long, loving relationship, but she wasn't interested in it at all. She plainly told me she doesn't enjoy sex and she takes no interest in it. 
That hurt a lot because I know that sex is an important part of marriage and that other couples really thrived in this department along with many others. We didn't have much in common, to be honest. We didn't think the same way. We didn't really talk the same. For all intents and purposes, we didn't really belong together. But I felt that I loved her regardless of that and that we could work through these kinds of things. I tried to do this on my own. I tried to carry the weight of the marriage on my own shoulders. The more I tried, the more she seemed to resent me. At this point, we are both mid-30s with four kids. I'm still working tons of hours and she's off and on with part-time work. This is when I started to notice the change. She started ignoring me more and being very short with me when we had to talk. She was spending a lot of time on Facebook and making a lot of private cell phone calls. Both were unusual for her. She started closing the door when changing her clothes, something she'd never done before. Very unlike her. The more this went on, the more frustrated I became. None of it made sense to me. At the time, I was still working nights and was fast asleep one afternoon when she came in the room crying and asking me, to come talk to her. I sat down, hugged her, and was asking what was wrong. He begins to tell me that she's been having an affair with someone she went to high school with. It never became sexual, but it was very close to it happening. He told me that they started talking on Facebook and that she was impressed with how he worked two jobs so his wife didn't have to work. I said two jobs that work out to less hours than when I work in one? She ignores that and goes on to tell me that he rejected sleeping with her because he couldn't make a commitment. He wasn't leaving his wife to be with her. I'm starting to get ticked at this point. Really ticked. Who wouldn't? I said what happened exactly. They went to a parking lot and started making out. He was asking to go to a hotel with her and she said yes, but only with the promise of a full-blown relationship together. I said, wait, you were trying to leave me for him and take our kid and take our kids too? I swear her exact response to me was this. Did you hear what I said? He rejected me. He didn't want me. I sat in disbelief at what I was hearing. I said, you just told me you tried to have sex with another man. Take my kids away from me and leave me here alone. And you want me to feel sorry for you? That's right, folks. She wanted me to feel bad for her because she was rejected by the guy who thought she was nothing more than a booty call. I should have left her at that point, but I didn't. I started doing counseling with the church deacon, and upon explaining the situation, he thought I was nuts for staying with her. He was right, but I couldn't bear the thought of not seeing my children every day. What's worse, having some other man as their father figure. It was a thought I couldn't stand. I'd rather just be unhappy in the marriage and just make it work the best I can. When they are grown, then I'll divorce her. That was my plan anyway. A year goes by and we're struggling in every way possible. She takes a job at Walmart. Full time, believe it or not. She starts becoming distant again and even leaving on the weekends to go stay with a friend. She'd never done that before, so I knew something was wrong. She stopped using our bank account, yet would come home with new stuff. Again, odd, and unlike her, but I didn't want to push things. In my head, I knew what was going on, but I wasn't in the right mental position to handle it at that time. As time goes on, she starts spending more time away from home, even taking our kids to her friend's house for dinner and overnight stays. Wow, dude, really? My older son stopped going after the second time. In fact, he refused to go anymore but wouldn't say why. My sister calls me one Friday night and was asking to come over because she knew my wife wouldn't be there. When she gets there, she's asking me where she is and I tell her her friend's house. She was asking which friend. I say, I don't know. I've never been invited over to meet her. She's asking my seven-year-old daughter if she knows where her mother is and she looks at both of us for a few seconds and says, I'm not supposed to say. Wow.
That's when I snapped. It wasn't as if I didn't know what was going on somewhere in the back of my head, but just hearing those words come out of her mouth just made me burn with anger. My sister knew where she was. Her boyfriend had seen my wife and her lover together in the neighborhood. He just happened to be visiting a friend in. So he told my sister what he saw. The next morning, I was asking my oldest child where her mother was. She said she didn't know. I said I've been calling her cell and she's not answering. A few minutes later, she tells me she's at church cleaning. I was asking how she knew that. She told me that she called her other cell phone. I said, what other cell phone? That's when she came clean and showed her phone that I knew nothing about that he was paying for. I told my daughter I wasn't paying for her to have a cell phone. So my wife's side guy got both of them their own phone. Dang. So she calls her on that phone and tells her the game is over and that I know everything. I get on the phone and of course she blames me for all of it. No tears, no apologies, nothing. It's just all my fault and she feels no responsibility for her actions at all. Come to find out, she was regularly taking him to the church with her to help her clean. When people would ask who he was, she would tell them, just a friend. When they'd ask where I was, she'd just say, at home. I couldn't believe the things that were going on. When I started asking the kids who this guy was, they just said, he has money. Wow. I found out he was a boyfriend from her past, and the name sounded familiar. I remembered her telling me the story of a past boyfriend that was obsessed with her and that he was ugly but had a nice car. That was good enough for her at the time. When she finally got her own, she dumped him. He later showed up at her family's house with a gun threatening to hurt her or himself if she didn't come back. Wow. He ended up being arrested. She hadn't seen him in over 20 years. But now, she's ready to ditch me for the second time for this guy. He told her he had $200,000 saved and was going to buy her a house. He had a decent job too, a better paying job than mine. My sister and I did some digging and found out he was arrested for cocaine trafficking but had won a large scratch off worth about $40,000, most of which he had already spent. When the truth came out a couple months later, suddenly I didn't seem like such a bad guy anymore. By this time, I was done with her. I was living with my mother because I couldn't afford to pay her child support while also paying a mortgage. I worked a lot of hours, but, but it still wasn't enough. Her uncle was a millionaire, offered me a house and a brand new vehicle if I would take his niece back. I immediately declined. I wasn't mean about it. I just told him no thank you. After she found out her boy toy was broke and lied to her about everything, she moved away from him and went from one relative to the next, dragging my children along for one ride. Wow. I couldn't afford to hire a lawyer, so things just remained crappy for a long time before we finally got the divorce. Out of four children, three of them refused to talk to her or have any kind of relationship with her. The Otis does because her boyfriend works with my ex's new husband. We are both remarried now and my children really like my wife while they can't stand the ex's new husband. There's a ton of other things I could have said. Stories about the stitches that my son had to get while I was at work. The hole in my daughter's chin that I wasn't there for either. Stories I was told by the ex that didn't that didn't match the stories that were told by my kids. I put up with a lot and they put up with even more. I don't want to, I don't want to make things out as if to say I did no wrong. That wouldn't be the case at all. Through those years I did struggle with porn. Of course we had almost zero sex, but I but I still won't use that as an excuse. And no, the porn wasn't the reason for us not having sex. I also had a stint where I was stealing from the job. I worked that so no, I'm no angel either, but I'm not sure it works out to be the same in comparison to her. She took things to levels I never knew existed. Thanks for hearing me out. 
I really hope there's nobody that had it worse than I did. Wow. Let me get my thoughts on this. First, I want to thank you, man, for sending in a story, uh, sharing your story. Um, uh, I don't, you know, I've, I've heard some really bad stories on here. I've heard some crappy things, man, whether it was a subscriber email or the story from online, you know, from, you know, AP going to jail, wife going to jail, eating wife going to jail, husband going to jail because he attacked the AP. Um, you know, self deletion, a lot, it's been a lot of craziness, man. Um, I am sorry you had to go through that. And I know a lot of people are going to say, dude, you brought it on yourself. You know, the red flags were there. You put up with it. You know, think about it. You guys married so young. I know the position. I know how you felt and I know how she felt in that marriage. You guys felt like you couldn't leave. You needed each other you were young you didn't have that much money and here you are working all these hours all these hours just to barely make it and she's not contributing she probably there's a good chance she was cheating the whole time i'm not saying you should have stayed with her should have never gotten married that young you know you shouldn't have gotten into a situation that young you know, you got to focus on yourself. If, if young guys listening, you know, um, I, I look at the uh, analytics a lot and I, and I see the ages um, and there are some young guys that do listen. Get yourself together. That is the main. That is the most important thing. Get yourself together. Focus on your career. What do you want to do? If, if, if you feel like you have to get married and you have to have children and all that stuff, at least get yourself together first. Because I promise you, once you get yourself together and you're going to work hard to get that, because you're going to have to, you're going to work so hard, you're, you're going to be very picky with who you decide to be with. You're not going to want just anybody to come and destroy what you've built, hopefully, most likely. But um, this guy, he was so young, you know, he said, you know, you guys were, were you were teenagers still, I think, when you got married, you know, 18, right? 18, 19. So, man, that's just messed up. The feeling like some other man is, you know, buying things for your wife and then buying things for your children. Like she had already checked out. That's why she when you when you called her or you had your daughter call her. And you confronted her and she had no tears. She was like, oh, it's your fault. She, she had already checked out. She was already done with you. She had a whole different relationship with somebody else while still being married to you. And like you said, you had that gut feeling and you knew. But for some reason, you were afraid to even confront her on it. She had been cheating on you for years. Years, man. Oh, man. Young guys, if you really, really feel like, you know, I'm I, I, I want to be married and all that stuff and I want a relationship. Get yourself together first. Don't try to go and build it with, you know, a woman and have children and try to build it on top of that because it's going to be much harder. Get yourself together by yourself. It's OK to be alone. It's OK. You know, you can date, hang out, do what you want. But don't get into anything serious. Get yourself together. Whether it's trade school, college, I don't care what it is. Whatever is going to, you know, help you find your purpose. You know, get yourself together first. But, um, dude, I do appreciate you sending in this story and being honest. You know, um, thanks. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's true story nation at gmail.com. I'll catch you guys at the next one.